Hello, my name is Lily McCarran. I am the project coordinator at the Stephen Thomas Museum of Art. Today I'm speaking with Zarek Clinton. Zarek is one of the five artists featured in the exhibition currently on view in the museum's West Gallery. It's called Healing Our Humanity, Finding Love, Hope, and Unity. This exhibition was juried by September Gray. It's on view until July 10th. In your artist statement, you describe your parents as creative people who instilled in you a love of art at an early age. Um, and that caught my eye. So I was just curious, like, to get started, just what were your parents like growing up? Um, well, my mom was um, a senior person um, creative quilt, even to this day. And um, so when I was, I guess, probably four or five years old, I guess she recognized the creativity in me and went ahead and um, put me on track down, sketchbook, jump full, things like that. And it kind of went from there. And then my dad also had um, a creative strand in terms of um, being able to see things in three dimensional, three dimensions with, uh, he's good with his hands with construction. So those two, I guess, things kind of pushed me toward investigating the creativity aspect in terms of the art scene. And even to this day, as I said, both of them are still. You know, doing certain things, my mom was so with the um, creative quilt making. Very cool. So they, you just kind of saw them making and using their hands around the house, and um, started to kind of use those same skills. And your education is largely in art education, and you've had a career as an art educator. So. Um, how have you, or I guess first question, were you first an art educator before you were an artist or vice versa? Well, I've been teaching uh, high school art for 26 years, but I've always been an artist. Um, not so much as um, recent years where I'm really just focusing um, a lot more on creating art and getting into you know, shows and selling art. That's more recent, but I've always um, been an artist not so much in, in terms of exhibiting up until the last uh, four or five years. Okay. So have you found it easy to maintain both a studio practice and a career? Because I know that's something that a lot of working artists, you know, have to maintain that balance or strike the balance in their own lives. Well, it's, it's definitely not easy. It's, it's pretty difficult working uh, a teaching job and then, Getting in the studio a lot during the week. Uh, it's just, I don't really get a lot of sleep on some days because I'm like, you know, creating in the studio and uh, going around to shows and doing those types of things. So it's a pretty difficult thing in terms of the, the workload to strike that balance, but I enjoy it. So it's not really not like a work thing to me. So it's just a matter of being able to um, strike that balance of doing what you have to do with the day job and then putting in the hours in the studio. Yeah. And you have a studio at the Hood Street Art Center, right? That's correct. So what is it like? like what's a typical afternoon or morning in the studio like for you? Uh, well, uh, I'm all, every day I'm doing something in the, you know related to what uh, the visual arts. You know, um, if I'm not actually creating a piece, I'm sketching, I'm doing research. So it's, it's every day is something. But normally I do a lot of sketching um, at home and, you know, at the studio. Then I actually go in and kind of put things together. And that's kind of a daily thing. I really don't take a lot of days off from that. Um, so as I said, if I'm not, you know, sketching out ideas, I'm actually creating a piece or I'm actually researching um, a technique or researching another artist. So it's, it's pretty much a, a daily thing to me. And it's really a calling. Like I said, it, it's, it's really not like it's work to me. So I don't really look at it as work. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of what I do. And uh, with 26 years in, I know I'm getting close to the end of my teaching career. So you know, I guess it's, I'm, I'm kind of already making that transition. Right. Well, you share that space with other artists or other artists rent those studios, correct? That's correct. So is it 
sort of a collaborative environment or are y'all kind of doing your own thing? Uh, for the most part, everybody's doing our own, doing their own thing. We don't, nobody else in the studio does what I do. Um, I'm probably the only abstract artist in the studio, in that particular studio. Um, we have a realistic artist and then we have uh, a ceramic artist, an artist that uses, I guess we call it, um, kind of like mannerism style and it's kind of like mannerism and realistic at the same time. So I'm the only one up there that's actually doing abstract, like purely abstract work. Mm. And so I want to talk about music. Obviously, that's kind of the theme of our spotlight for you is that music is an important part of your process and your Uh statements as a color and rhythm are stimulated through music. So I'm curious how much forethought goes into that relationship. Like, do you put on specific albums with intention of rendering a certain mood or composition or is it more free flowing than that and it kind of just you know happens more organically no it's pretty uh, strategic in a sense it kind of depends on what i'm working on um if i'm working on um, i guess a piece where i wanted to have a lot of rhythm and movement i'm gonna you know play more i guess you say um upbeat music uh, R&B, stuff like that. But then, you know, for the Perilous Time series, I played, I guess, on the on the list, I had some of the gospel songs I kind of listened to. And that kind of puts your mind in a space to um, kind of release what you have inside visually. So it really is based on, you know, what I'm trying to accomplish. Yeah, and your work in this show focuses particularly on the challenges with of this past year with you know the pandemic and civil rights protests um so it makes sense that you would be sort of trying to get into a somber place um and you also spoke about your students and how they've kind of been doing the same thing to release or to channel some energy you know kind of living in the same environment that we live in um how have you been observing students using art to express themselves well you know when i give them projects um a lot of times i give them open-ended projects especially the upper level students you know the intro the introduction to art students i kind of you know kind of keep them on a, a strict path to a point until i kind of see what they can do but my ap students particularly they are really going in in terms of um what they experienced during the pandemic and i just had one student submit a portfolio today and every one of her images has something to do with, you know, kind of like that pandemic feel in terms of the things that people have been experiencing. And she did a, a, a AP portfolio on faces of different people. And you can actually see, even though they're really portraits, you can kind of see the anguish on their face, the somberness, uh, the, the struggle. You can see all of that come through. Mm. How do you feel since you have spent so much time with young artists um, throughout your career? How do you feel about this incoming generation of artists and what it kind of maybe what the art scene is going to look like in the Southeast in 15 years? That's an interesting question. Um, We do have a lot of talented artists. Uh, I mean, in the last, I would say the last five years. I've really seen some really talented artists come through. Uh, I actually had a student that got a full ride to SCAD two years ago. So, uh, and I've, every year I have students that go off to art school. I have former students that are art teachers. So I, I don't, I don't see, you know, what other people are saying in, in some of the articles I read about the art. So uh, kind of in jeopardy and things like that. I think uh, what, what happens is a lot of times the students don't have access to art because art is not in all schools. And I think that's the issue. And, but I, the art is always going to be there. Kids need a way to express themselves. Some do it through music. Some do it uh, through, through visual art. And I think, um, I don't think it's going in a way. And I, the talent is there. Kids are drawing. My, my son is a, a seventh grader. And one of his friends, I kind of, I met to a couple of his friends. They take their drawing pads around with them right now, like I used to do 
when I was a kid, and um, they're really good. And that's seventh grade, but they're really good. They study, they go to YouTube and look at uh, techniques, look at other artists, and I give them, you know, pointers, give them suggestions and people to look at. So I think the arts are, are going to be maybe even more important in the next few years based on this dire situation that we just experienced. Mm. Well, I guess I could speak speak to the music part a little bit more. For me as an artist, well, for me as a person in general, I listen to music all the time. I listen to all different types of music. Um, and that is a situation where I'm not sure how uh, effective I would be if I wasn't listening to music. Because, as, you know, as we kind of discussed a few moments ago, the music kind of puts you in that space where you need to be to kind of uh, perform, I guess you could say. Or it, it um, motivates, it does different things, or, it, or sometimes it even enlightens people. Some of the lyrics I listen to, and and you know it's it's um music can do a lot of things just like art. I guess it's kind of why I kind of gravitate to it, and I've always been like that. Even as a young person, uh, I used to listen to a lot of different styles of music. I'm not just um, entertained by one genre, and so I mean I like jazz, the R and B, some hip hop. I mean gospel. So you know, it just depends on what vein you're trying to get in for that particular piece. Right. Do you feel like music can do something or express something that visual art can't? Or is it just a matter of representation? Hmm. I don't think it... I, I think they both kind of do the same thing. Because um, I've... I have friends that are, you know, musicians, they sing, they play play instruments. I think maybe sometimes the music gets uh, people more emotional at a faster pace. But I think when you do really good art, I think art can do the same thing. Because I've seen people at art shows look at a piece and they express some, some really strong emotions based on what they're looking at. So... I think they can kind of, both can kind of do the same thing. Mm. It's just a matter of at what pace. Right. I think the pace. I mean, music is, is um, I guess I, I, I'll give this uh, analogy. I read the book called um, Your Brain on Music, and it talks about how your brain responds when you hear certain uh, sounds certain instruments and things like that it's pretty unique how that works so I think it's more intense with the music because it's almost like it's more direct um, and maybe with the art especially with abstract maybe you have to really understand what's going on in the image first or if it's realistic if it's um, it can be very impactful depending on what it, what it looks like to that person I was just give this example if you some of the artists, they may make pictures where they're really graphic and they're going to evoke that same kind of emotion that a, 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 uh, an upbeat song would or a somber song would. So I think it's kind of the same. They're in the same vein. Yeah. Yeah, I guess music is just a more sensory experience, you know, right off right. the bat. Right. That, that's, that's, the, that's the word. And, and it's just like it's, you hearing it, and it's, it's it could be loud, it could be really really low, and you gotta really listen closely. And with the art, it's kind of the same. If it's um, really subtle things in the picture, you gotta really pay attention. You gotta interact with the with the piece to kind of get out of it what you what you need to uh, understand. So I think maybe it's a longer process. What would you? want people, viewers, to understand about your work in the show when they're looking at it? For these pieces, um, I would say that 
you know, the art for me was an expressive thing to kind of, um, I guess, even process what we've been through in the last, I guess, year and a half or so. And also able to put that into an image that other people could kind of, um, I don't want to say, um, I guess, respond to or actually um, have that same kind of feeling. You know, maybe they do, maybe they don't. But especially the, the piece I did, the monocratic, monochromatic piece I did that's in blue. It's kind of, um, I guess it can kind of be appear as a somber piece in a way. But then I have a part of it that I kind of did a highlighted area where it all, it's almost like a, um, uh, the sun peeking out. So that's kind of um, what I was trying to accomplish with that piece. So I could kind of give off that feel, but at the same time, that there's not, it's not all lost. There's whole oh, things are going to get better. Nothing's going to, you know, stay like that forever. Well, um, this has been a really nice conversation and I'm, I'm grateful that you've let us, everybody who's going to listen to this, you know, hear more about your personal approach to art and, um, the kind of art you make seems very vulnerable and personal. So thank you for sharing that with us. It, it, it definitely is. And I guess you don't realize it until you have to really talk about your art. So <laughs> it's, that's what I've been getting uh, the, the, in my recent shows. It's like you really uh, have a personal aspect to what you create. And that's definitely true. I don't just, you know, create for the sake of creating. If I don't really have anything to say, I probably wouldn't even create art. Hello, my name is Lily McCarran.